Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another instalment of my investigation into which manufacturer produces the best open wagons. Up to date, it's Hornby. So last time we looked at Oxford Rail, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up there. Their wagons did come out pretty well. They ended up with 8.91 out of 10, if I've remembered correctly, which is pretty good. That's what we've got to beat today. So here we have three Hornby wagons. I picked these up. I've gone for a little bit of a variety. They cost me £12.50 each, which is £2.50 each more than the Oxford Rail wagons that I purchased, so quite a lot more expensive. The Oxford Rail ones cost £30 for three, this ended up costing £37.50 I believe for three, so an awful lot more expensive. Anyway, let me show you what we have then. So we have this one, this Hawkins one, this is a seven plank wagon and uh, that's probably the largest. Uh, then we have this one, this one is a six plank wagon, Shoals and Sons, which is a pretty good looking one, I quite enjoyed the decoration on that one, so that was partly the reason why I picked that one up. And then we have the smallest one, the ubiquitous Arnold Sands wagon, which is a four planker. Um, the one thing that is to be said about Hornby's range and also Backman's that might not be apparent through these little test videos that I'm doing, is that Hornby's range of wagons is quite a lot more extensive than Oxford's. So even though Oxford's wagons may very well be better, we'll have to wait and see on that, they don't have quite the range that Hornby do, so do consider that. For the time being though, let's get these out and find out just what these are like. So, to be honest with you, I'm really looking forward to this one because Hornby is the only of the three manufacturers that I'm looking at in this series from which I have never tried a modern wagon. Uh, Oxford Rail, I happen to have tried before because I bought a, a wagon pack. Mackman, I have tried before. I've tried some of their modern stuff because I've had some of it in a train set. I also picked some up from a train fair. The only Hornby wagons I've owned up until now was the basic train set wagons and of course the old crusty wagons from many, many years ago. So this will be really, really interesting, I reckon. So I'm going to move these two out of the way. We'll start with the biggest one first of all. This is the eight plank wagon. In fact, let me just show you what's on the end of the box. As you can see, this is our 6875. It's a seven plank wagon. Hawkins number 1022 and as you can see through the front of the box this has largely similar packaging to Oxford Rail or at least that's the way it seems from the outside. So without any further ado let's get this out shall we there's nothing really on the box to see so let's find out what this is like. Oof. Now I know it's a bit of a meme to talk about packaging these days but I must say that box was a lot more sturdy than the Oxford ones. Yeah the Oxford's weren't all that sturdy. It's, it's immaterial, it really doesn't matter. And so is the sort of blister on the inside. That is a lot more firm. Uh, I don't know whether it's actually going to make any practical difference, but I would say the packaging may do a slightly better job, if any, on Hornby than Oxford. Although, obviously, that is not really the focus. We want to talk about the actual wagons. So, here we go. Ooh. Now, first impressions. Well, the first thing I've noticed is that there seems to be a little bit more weight to this. Possibly that's because it's a slightly larger wagon, possibly because it's a little bit more substantial. The other thing I've noticed is that the level of detail seems to be largely similar. The decoration looks to be really, really good, and we've got similar features such as the NEM couplings, metal wheels. So yeah, this may be closer than I thought. We'll have to take a, a closer look later on and see, but that one looks beautiful. Uh, the decoration looks just as good as Oxford's actually. So that's very good. Right, next one then, shall we go for the, what's this one? This one is the, yep, yeah, this is the six plank wagon. So there we go, as you can see, nice close up there. Yeah, it's an unusual sort of livery, if you want to call it a livery, the sort of grey with almost pinky text. Well, it's white text with like a pink emboss or drop shadow, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's quite unusual, quite like it. So if you want to see what this one is, the end of the box there shows you the product code, which is R6871. This one's a six plank, as I say. Shoals and Sons, goodness knows how to pronounce that correctly. And this one is number 778. Another thing I should say is that when I was browsing through Hornby's wagons, £12.50 was not the cheapest from the retail. sorry, the, not the most expensive from the retailers rather. Uh, I did see some that were considerably more than that, and I did see some that looked as though they were ex-Dapple wagons with the sort of Airfix style coupling on them. 
and they were equally expensive. So do be careful with the Hornby wagons. Some of them aren't as modern as the packaging might suggest. This one looks to be though. Yep, yeah, this one looks really cool actually. This one seems a lot shorter than the last one. Um, let's get it out. Yeah, this looks incredibly small compared to some of those Oxford ones I looked at. We'll have to compare the size. Uh, and it's not a criticism. I actually really enjoy how tiny and dinky this one is. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous is that. Uh, once again, yeah, the application looks great. We'll take a closer look at some of this in a second. But yeah, looks really good. I like that one very much already. That's probably my favourite. So that's cool. Okay, wagon the third then. Here it is. Now, I must have loads of these Arnold Sands wagons. I've got probably 10 of them or something crazy like that. None of them are modern like this one though. So yeah, why Arnold Sands is such a popular thing? Were they particularly numerous in real life? I have no idea. Either way, there's the end of the box for you then. So the product code of this wagon is R6862. This is the four plank, so the smallest of the pick. Arnold Sands and it's number 711. So there we go. Uh, this one looks pretty beautiful. This is, this is what most people I imagine would think of when you say open wagon to them. Yeah, it's just the classic look wagon isn't it and uh, I thought it would be quite nice to have a, a modern Arnold wagon just to maybe compare with the old ones at some point maybe that would be a bit of a boring video subject but let me know would you like to watch that or not be honest right here we go so yeah all the same by the way the packaging on these has been consistent which is good right I'll lift it out take a look okay Arnold Sands, and what a colour that is. Yeah, really beautiful is that. Um, very much the same as the other wagons. Uh, the level of detail appears to be pretty much similar, I would say. Looks really, really good. Yeah, metal wheels, NEM couplings, etc., etc. Okay, so let's bring these in then. Three wagons. Yeah, so far these are looking really good. I haven't seen anything yet that would justify the extra £7.50, was it, that I spent? on Hornby as opposed to Oxford. I suppose the Hawkins one is quite a bit larger, if anything. But besides that, yep, they look to be pretty good. There's nothing particularly frightening about these at the moment, is there? So let's take a closer look at some of these, shall we? And go into some detail. All right, so there is the big one. That's the Hawkins seven plank wagon up close and personal for you. And I thought I would start with this one because obviously I reviewed a seven plank wagon from Oxford as well. So I can make some decent comparisons between the two. And to be honest with you, I'm really surprised that the two manufacturers wagons are as different as they are. There are quite a few differences. The basic rundown, I would say, is that Hornby just about have it where quality is concerned, although Oxford Rail win by quite a big margin when it comes to detail. So let's talk about quality to start with then. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, the weight. The Hornby 7 Planker weighs 27 grams, whereas the Oxford one only weighed 23. So that's a difference of 4 grams. Obviously, that's tiny, really, but in terms of percentages, that is quite a lot. The couplings are also slightly better, as you can see these are screwed to the chassis, or rather the NEM pockets are screwed to the chassis, which means you can take those off and the wagon will be perfectly realistic without any couplings or any provision for couplings like that. And the pivoting mechanism is also a bit more involved with this, as you can see you've got these plastic sticks which are used as springs. But to be fair, even though the Oxford wagons were a lot simpler in that regard, they still performed absolutely fine, so you have to question whether that is worth it. There are some details which are slightly better quality as well. For example, these brake levers here are made of metal on the Hornby versions, as far as I can tell, which means they're a lot sturdier. Those were just made of plastic on the Oxford version. So yeah, as I say, quality for Hornby just about wins. But as I say, for detail, Oxford wins by a considerable margin. So on this Hornby 7 planker, you can see the body clips very, very clearly. They are the sort of pegs which clip down onto the chassis. Those are very visible on these Hornby ones, and that was not the case with the Oxford ones. This little piece, which may be something to do with unloading the wagon, on the Oxford version, that was a separately fitted piece, but on the Hornby one, that is just a part of the moulding. And similarly, the support structure here, you see these two supports on the other end of the wagon, those are separately fitted on the Oxford wagons, but they are just a part of the moulding with this Hornby one. The same thing goes with the wheels. If you remember on the Oxford wagons, the wheels were all painted, but these are not. These are completely unpainted. That's not really a comment on the accuracy. That could very well be prototypical for the respective wagons, but it is a comment on value for money because obviously this wagon cost £2.50 more from the retailers than the Oxford wagons, which is very, very interesting. 
Besides those differences though, there is not a great deal of difference in the finish. As you can see, the printed detail is absolutely fine, just as good really as the Oxford ones. I wouldn't say there's any noticeable difference, other than the fact that the decoration is a little bit more glossy, if I had to say that. And the same thing goes with the buffers. They're a little bit more pristine. They have a little more of a high shine to them, which is less realistic, but a bit nicer to look at if you prefer pristine rolling stock, I suppose. But besides that, the level of detail is pretty similar. Like I say, the underframes are similarly good on both, and the interior detail is similarly good. We've got the painted paneling, as you can see, and a moulded inside. So Wagon the First does pretty well. Let's have a quick look at the other two. All right, so there is the six plank wagon looking pretty good as you can see. The first thing I want to talk about now is variety because quite clearly this does not use the same underframe that the Oxford version did. And obviously because it's a different number of planks and it's a bit shorter, the body is different as well. So that is one thing Hornby has over Oxford. They have a much more diverse range. So do consider that even though my scores might not reflect that. Besides that though, most of the features are the same. You can see that this also has very, very high decoration standards. Really, really well done. Also quite glossy, perhaps not quite as glossy as the previous one, but yeah, the application is relatively glossy. The underframes are basically the same. We do have the metal brake levers and lots of underframe detail, and a lot of the other details are very similar. The buffers are metal but unsprung. We've got the NEM couplings. Yep, yeah, it's pretty good. The interior looks a little bit different. As you can see, we've got sort of, uh, well, horizontal planks, depending on how you look at it, going across the bottom. So again, it's just a very different type of wagon, uh, thanks to Hornby's more considerable range. Besides that though, yep, yeah, it's a very good looking wagon. Is it quite as good value as the Oxford similar sized ones? Probably not, because once again, this was £12.50. Okay, let's look at the baby. So there it is then, the Arnold Sands wagons. This is the smallest and lightest. This one weighs in at 22 grams, so that is now a little bit lighter than the Oxford ones, although obviously it is pretty tiny. So this one looks pretty good. As you might notice, this does actually use the same underframe, I'm pretty sure, than the, uh, that the six planker did. Although obviously some of the details haven't been painted on it, so um, that does make it look quite a lot different. So the chassis is exactly the same. It's got the same coupling, same unpainted wheels, etc., etc. The painted detail is fantastic as always. You can look as closely at that as you like, and it looks just fine. The interior, for want of a better term, is slightly different though. As you can see, the moulding is the same, but it's been painted a different colour which again is a nice mark of diversity isn't it. Personally I think I like this size of wagon the most. I do quite like them when they're lower for some reason. I've no idea why that is. That's a bit mental isn't it? <laughs> but yeah shorter wagons for me I really enjoy and in fact when we get on to do the Backman ones I've got a really small wagon. It's a one plank I believe so I'm really looking forward to doing that. But for the time being, there we go. Those are the three wagons from Hornby. Yep, like I say, overall, they beat Oxford just about on quality and weight and props build quality maybe, but they do not beat Oxford on detail, which is very interesting given the price. Okay, now then, let's talk a little bit about performance. Let's get these running. So I have set up the massive Great Western 72XX for this running session, and it's a bit of a Hornby theme. So as you can see, she's coupled to some more Hornby wagons. And I've got these Hornby wagons, these new ones that I've just reviewed, ready for a little bit of a test. So let's grab the Hawkins wagon and see how free rolling it is. Give it a little push. Oh yes, that is very, very free rolling. In fact, I have done the rolling test, uh, which you might remember from Oxford, where I put the wagon at the top of the hill here and let it roll down. Now, if you remember, the Oxford wagons stopped just there um, in front of the signal box. Annoyingly, the two bits of foliage I used to gauge where it stopped seem to have gone now for some reason. <laughs> I guess that's nature for you. But either way, you can see this Hornby wagon got a lot further and so therefore it's much more freewheeling. Now you might think that's just because of the slightly extra weight. You might expect that the wheels aren't any freer. Well, no, I don't think so because I tried the much lighter and smaller Arnold Sands wagon from Hornby and even that got considerably further than the Oxford ones did. However, that's not to say the Oxford rail uh, wagons were in any way difficult to move at all. They were very, very freewheeling, but uh, I think Hornby's seem to be even more so. Yeah, as you can see, that is fantastic. 
So quite possibly the same locomotive could manage more wagons. Right, well, the couplings all seem to function pretty well, didn't they? Uh, I didn't really notice them, which is a good sign, isn't it? If you don't even notice that the couplings have worked. Uh, let's back up the J, well, not the J72, the 72XX and see if it couples all right with the other couplings. Yes, no problem whatsoever, which suggests that the couplings are all the right height and they all sort of engage properly and they're all held central by that springing mechanism. That's incredibly positive. Okay, well, let's start it off then. Let's start off the train and clarify that these wagons will handle all of the curves on the layout. Okay, here we go. Let's go to relatively medium speed. Well, there they go. And they do look great, it must be said, don't they? Here we go. That Hawkins one is the uh, first of the three we're looking at. Oh yeah, that was the S-Bend, that's the most difficult part and they've done it no problem. So it looks as though the performance is full marks, can't fault it, couplings work fine, no derailments on the curves, at least not yet. Very good, very very good, thumbs up. On the middle line then I have another classic Hornby Loco with some Hornby rolling stock, very classic Hornby rolling stock. It is the LMYR Pug in the LMS Black, struggling, <laughs> struggling with too many wagons there, oh dear. Yeah, giving her a bit too many there, oops. Go on, might have to pull one or two of those off I reckon. Crikey, there's only six plus a brake van and it stopped on the express points. Well, that was a bit of a cock up, wasn't it? It's put a dampener on things. Uh, let's try just taking one off and uh, hopefully once she's got some momentum on the next lap, uh, it might get around that a bit better. Go on, couple up. <laughs> stopped on the express points again. Yeah, well, that wasn't particularly successful, was it? Oh, flipping thing. Right, anyway, it's off. And then on the inside line, we have a uh, classic Hornby once again. It's the Terrier, uh, the old Terrier, by the way. Here it comes. And it has everybody's beginner rolling stock. Literally everybody starts with these tankers from Hornby. I certainly did. Well, I had a few. Um, some of my first wagons anyway. Uh, so, yeah, they are Hornby classics as well, in my opinion. So overall then, uh, the Hungby open wagons, or at least the ones I've reviewed today, are okay, aren't they? They're, they're just fine, they do the job. I'm not, however, very impressed with them for the price, because obviously for £2.50 more than the Oxford Rail ones, they needed to be more detailed and not less. And yes, they're slightly better quality, but that does not outweigh the better detail and the lower price that Oxford offer. So oh, even though they're decent, and even though Hornby offer a much better selection, I think Oxford, for the wagons they do produce, win by a country mile, really. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some ratings then for the various Hornby mineral wagons. Yes, the detail wasn't quite as good as Oxford Rails. I do suspect that the bodies, at least, the tops of the wagons, may be older than the chassis. I reckon Hornby might have reused an older design. But they're in the modern range and they're being sold for a modern price, so I don't feel any problem at all in comparing these with the likes of Oxford Rail. The performance though was very, very good. The couplings work as they should. They handle curves without any problems and they're really, really nice and freewheeling. So the performance cannot be faulted in any way. The quality is also really, really good. They're good and heavy. The coupling mechanism is pretty clever as well. I do like that. And they're assembled to a very high standard without any issues whatsoever in the decoration. The value for money is a bit of a problem though because I thought Oxford Rails wagons for a tenner were about right. These for an extra £2.50 each, given that they're less detailed, don't seem quite as good in my opinion, so I've had to give this a 3 out of 5. Overall that gives 8.08 .08 out of 10, still a very very good score, but if we pop this into the logbook you can see that Hornby have not beaten Oxford Rail, they're second just below Oxford and above their LSWR brake. Overall though, really decent wagons, I like them. So, let me know at this point, which brand would you rather buy, Hornby or Oxford? I'll also include Backman in that, even though I haven't done them yet. But if you think Backman are going to come out on top, feel free to vote for them, and we'll see how it turns out. 
So far though, I reckon my money's on Oxford. Having seen these, I'm quite confident in that, I'd say. All right, very good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Uh, once again, Oxford Rail are coming out of one of my reviews looking pretty good, aren't they? That's not to say the Hornby wagons are bad by any means, and, you know, they're pretty decent, I would say. Close enough in the long run, although, yep, the price is pretty interesting to note, isn't it? Either way, as I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, do stay tuned, because I'll be doing a video like this, but for Backman open wagons at some point, and uh, I'm looking forward to that now. I want to wrap this up and find out which one wins. So, like I say, stay tuned for that. For now, though, have a great week, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>